Number two way to assess divine guidance is to be in love with God. All the things I've heard of my father, I have shown it to you. John 15, 15. I call you no more servants, but friends. And love is the cord of friendship. Just being in love with God, it shows you everything that pertains to you. Oh my God. Everything. You don't struggle for it. Welcome to Apostle TV. The message you're about to watch will definitely transform your life. Be blessed as you watch. Understanding how God leads. It's our teaching series for our Sunday services this month. And the writer of scripture is Isaiah 59 verse 8. The way of peace they know not. And they have made crooked paths for their feet. Those who walk down in shall not know peace. So he leads us along the path of peace. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Don't have to run it as scatter. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For his presence accompanies me as I follow his leading. He prepares a table before me in presence of my enemies. Ah. He anointed my head with oil. And my cup runs over. He renders my enemies helpless as he leads me. As he leads me. They gnash with their teeth, but they can't touch me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me as I follow him. As I allow him to lead me. He commands goodness and mercy to follow me all the days of my life. Today... The God of his liberation will render your enemies helpless. <laughs> By releasing vengeance in the camp of the wicked. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. In the name of Jesus. We know that there's a part that seems right to a man, but the end they are rough at the ways of death. That's why we need to allow him to lead us. So we don't walk our steps into the mouth of a lion. I'm the Lord that teaches thee to profit as I lead you in the way that thou should go. Isaiah 48 and verse 17. Life becomes supernaturally profitable when we follow his leading. He leads us principally by his word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. He instructs us from his word. He reproves us. He corrects us. He shows us principles of the kingdom that are ever profitable. For all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is given for the profiting of mankind. Let his instructions be of interest to you so you can make the most of your life. 
how do we assess divine direction? Among others, we assess divine direction through prayer and fasting. Isaiah 58 verse 6, is this not the fast that I have chosen? This is why I prescribe fasting, to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let your prayers go free, and that he break every yoke. Today, every yoke of the wicked shall be broken off your life. God will render vengeance upon your enemies. You will walk into liberty today in grand style. No more interferences in your sleep. No more fear and dread in the course of the day. This your eye shall see evil no more. And then he began to unveil the benefits of fasting. And in verse 11 he said, And the Lord shall guide thee continually. We secure continuous guidance from the altar of prayer and fasting. Call upon me and I will answer you. Which way, Jesus? Call upon me and I will answer you. What steps am I to take? Call upon me and I will answer you. Is this your plan? Call upon me and I will answer you. Are you the one sending me to so and so place? Call upon me and I will answer you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Lord Jesus, you have called me. Now who pays me? Call upon me, I will answer you. And he did. Amen. Lord, why is nothing happening in that station? I'm not there. Call upon me and I will answer you. You'll be laboring in vain forever. Lord, why are there issues in these locations in Kaduna? Did I send you? Call upon me and I will answer you. Lord, you have given us the privilege to see, to partner with you in building the ark. Now we await the marching order. Quiet. Lord, what are you saying? Quiet. Then don't talk to me on this matter anymore. Call upon me, I will answer you. And then I arrested my case. No struggle. Is you know the job? <laughs> he said, don't talk to me anymore on this matter until I talk to you if I need to. Make you no best. Call upon me and you can go for 100 days of fasting. If you can't hear the answer, you are just frustrated. And when the time came, it just came in. And what a glorious, stress-free execution. The cheapest project ever embarked upon in this commission is the largest that we have ever done. It leads you beside the still waters. It was putting everything together without our knowledge. It was changing location without our knowledge. He did everything so neatly. You walk to this command, you don't know anything is going on. It's covered somewhere. And yet, woo. <laughs> Call upon me, don't just move. Go, 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 go. Everybody's moving, so I'm moving. Everybody's going, running, I'm running. The greatest discovery in the kingdom is the discovery of your individuality. Look to Abraham, your father, to Sarah David. I called him alone. Kingdom race, a race of individuality. You need to be personal about your work with God. Praise God. It's so important. I called him alone. So everybody is absolutely responsible for the outcome of his life. Everybody, every believer is absolutely responsible for the outcome of his life. We have apostles, prophets, and teachers, evangelists, and all that. <laughs> uh, they are to teach us if we are teachable. Whatever God tells them to teach, they teach us. They are to instruct us. There is covenant of vengeance. Somebody smiles, somebody laughs, somebody scorn. Each one makes his choice. Which vengeance? Every day, every day. <laughs> it's not in touch. It's out of touch. And so it keeps going around in cycles. God never forces his way into anybody's life. You would understand at the door and knock. You open and come in. You shut the door, I pass on. Everybody. 
I discovered that October 4, 1981, look to Abraham, your father. So I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord will deal with people in his church after the same manner. So everybody, everybody is responsible for the outcome of his or her life. Everybody, like Abraham. If you're Abraham's seed, then you better do the works of Abraham. He took personal responsibility in his work with God. He took personal responsibility in his work with God. Get out of their country, you moved. Circumcised all maybe in your family, you moved. Bring your only son Isaac, he rose up early in the morning. He just accepted personal responsibility in the absolute sense of it. And so we saw trouble came to Judah and Joshabat, the king gather the whole of Judah together in a fast. And why? We know not what to do. <laughs> we are etched in on every side. <laughs> we are like dead men. Which way long? That's what they pray about. And you saw that in Second Chronicles chapter uh, 20 and verse 12. We have no power or might against this great community that come against us. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes are on you to know what to do. And the prophetic word came and charted the course for them. And then had supernatural victory without shooting an arrow. They knew what to do through the platform of prayer and fasting. Ezra chapter 8 and verse 21 to 23. Ezra called for a fast. A proclaim fast to find the right way for them and then God showed up and showed them the path to go to their desired victory why in the course of a fast there's a breaking forth of light that shows the way through the wilderness and to the darkest region of life there's always a way out. Number two way to assess divine guidance is to be in love with God. All the things I've had of my father, I have shown it to you. John 15, 15. I call you no more servants, but friends, and love is the court of friendship. Just be in love with God, He shows you everything that pertains to you. Oh my God, everything. You don't struggle for it. You have a friend in Australia, you live in Nigeria, He knows everything about you that your next door neighbor. Hello, just to let you know, I'm going for the first service. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Your next neighbor doesn't know whether you're going to a bad or you're going to a bad he has no idea. He doesn't even know where you work. Amen. Your wife is traveling to a bad You call your friend in uh, Australia. Say, My wife traveled with traveling tomorrow after the first service to a bad <laughs> He's your friend. Distance notwithstanding, he has access to your clients. So when you become his friend, you have access to his plans. My God, can I do this thing and hide it from my friend Abraham? No. Genesis 18 verse 17. I'll tell Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom because I shouldn't do this without confiding in you. <laughs> I shouldn't do it. So when you become his friend, you gain natural access. Natural, I mean stress-free access to his plan and purpose. A lot of people are washing their mouth on me in 2015 when I told them you are heading for trouble. He told me. I saw trouble. I saw Nigeria under stress. He confided in me. Warned them. I'm a zero beneficiary of any political era in my life. Ask them. I'll never take a ballot box in my life. I've grown outside the realm by grace. 
when I wasn't grown, when I was crawling, it's not God's plan for my life. So it's not about this. And I will still tell you whether you want to hear it or not. Now, see your trouble since 2015. You can't assess his plan because you are, you are experienced in the faith. You need to be in love. He shows you. One of our sons was being electrocuted in Kaduna. At that instance, I called home. Hello. Where is he? He said, you can't see, you can't see what? Go ahead. Look for him. They found him holding a life wire in the sitting room on his tricycle. Same hour. Same hour. Now, <laughs> eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It doesn't enter the heart of any man. The things that God has in store for them that love him. But God has revealed it to them that love him. For the spirit of God searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God and unveils it to them. So when you are in love, you have access. You are in love, you have access. Don't fake this thing. And God's love is not theoretical. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Just enjoy his instructions. Embrace them. Don't fake them. Those who despise his word can't assess his plans. No. You can't treat God's word with levity. And expect him to treat you with dignity. <laughs> you can't. So when God shows you the way to go, no devil can stop it. No devil can stop it. Just remain in love with God. You won't struggle to assess his plans. Remain in love with God and you won't have to struggle to assess his plans. He that has my commandments and keeps it. John 14, 21 is the one that loves me. If you love me, my, <laughs> my father will love you and I will love you and I will manifest myself to you. <laughs> I will show up on all issues concerning you. You won't struggle to find me, I'll be there. Just to be in love with God. Do you love me? He said, yes, I do. Go after my lambs. Are you sure you love me? Go after my sheep. Peter, are you really very sure? Yes, I do. Go after my sheep. So going after the lost is one capital proof of our love for God. That's God's greatest love on the earth. God so loved the world, he dashed into the begotten son to rescue the world. So when you are in love with God, you are naturally in love with salvation of souls, establishment of souls in the faith. Glory to God. Now, listen. I was writing these things down some two days ago. Why? Are we transporting people for free to church? Is this not uh, a display of wealth? <laughs> Is this not a crave, a grace to see people in church? Why? <laughs> Number one, the worth of a soul in the sight of God is far greater than the worth of the whole world put together. It cost him the blood of his only begotten son to rescue mankind. So it's no deal with God. Number two, we are not only sent to the well to do, we are sent to the blind. The maimed, the downtrodden, the afflicted. There is no way they can get themselves across except somebody goes to bear them on their shoulders. John 14 21. You saw nine young chaps here on this platform. 
there is no way they can make their way to heaven without somebody reaching out to them and somebody bringing them here. We are sent to the homeless. There's no way they, you are homeless. How do you find your way down here? The closest church can't get there. Even what to where to get there, you don't have. It's not outlandish waste. It's an investment into God's capital interest. Amen. Go to the highways and edges and compare them to come. And how do you do that? Provide the means of getting there. They'll be there. There are many wounded soldiers in the battlefield. You don't leave them there. Luke 10, 31 to 34. There was this man that fell among robbers. And then a priest passed by. This thing is very bad. He left by passed by. My God, see what's happening in Nigeria. Then the good Samaritan stood there and said, No, went down, burned the wound, poured oil, poured wine, and carried him on his own ass into the inn where he will be treated. So we are carrying the wounded soldiers in the front into church where they shall be taken care of. We are not. <laughs> now, my problem is, did he ask you to do it? No, he's only telling you what you will do. Whether you are not involved or not, it doesn't matter. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's just telling you what he wants to do. And if you're interested, partner with him. You're not interested, goodbye and good luck. When I see the way God is leading, I have no, sir, I've never felt it that I'm in partnership with him. There are those who are here at this moment that there's no way they could have been here except that that provision is made. They want to. They long to, but they don't have the means to be there. And many are jumping levels by being involved. Now, I don't understand this. There are many members for long who have been providing free transportation for members of their zones, members of their for long, for long. There are families who buy buses that they don't need as a family. They need just to carry people. There are those who are driving it. They leave their own car and drive their own bus. To carry members. You think they'll be doing that if they are not getting something from it? He's not looking for who to use or who to bless. This is how things look. The prosperity of this church is not a myth, it's a kingdom mystery. Active partnership with Jesus in the advancement of his kingdom is the secret behind our unending, ever increasing prosperity. I mean, uh, people don't understand. And they don't have to, but they can't doubt it. <laughs> In the same vein, where you know the way God is leading, you just find yourself flourishing and flourishing and flourishing. You never suffer a setback anymore in your life. <laughs> Let me hear your loudest amen. <laughs> Let me hear your loudest amen. <laughs> Be in love with God, particularly as demonstrated in your passion for the lost to be saved and for them to be established in the faith. Stay in love. Number three, we are set divine guardians through heavenly visions. That is purely at God's instance. I can't work it out. You can work it out. God just shows up by himself. God just shows up by himself. He showed up to Peter by himself. Peter was hungry. He just showed up. He just showed up to Paul. I mean, that notorious nuisance. <laughs> he called it heavenly vision. Just showed up. God shows up at his will. But you can't doubt he's showing forth. When it shows what you know it, this is God. I was in the bedroom when I had arise, get down to Lagos, raise me a people. He shows up by himself. He's not in plan. Nobody has an idea of it. Nobody's looking for it. Amen. Amen. He showed up to deliver this mandate. I didn't ask him. 
I just went about my love for him. And then he showed up. They call it heavenly vision. God showing up to show you what next. And he does it at his own instance. He does it at any time. That's why we have to walk in the spirit, not to miss the moment when he shows up. To unveil what next step to take in life. Because one wrong step can wreck a whole destiny. Summary. Our taste and appetite for spiritual things is the platform for assessing divine guidance. <laughs> a natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit of God because they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them. He can never. He can never. <laughs> Amen. Come up here and I will show you the things that will grow tomorrow. Revelation 4.1. We have to come out of our natural estate into our spiritual realm to assess what tomorrow holds in God's agenda for our lives. So it's not for Jack and Harry. It's not for the Jack and Harry. It's for the spiritual. That's why to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. Romans 8 and verse 6. Some biblical proofs of being led by the Spirit. One, supernatural confidence. When God leads, His presence so dominates you that fear flees away. The Lord is my shepherd, and though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Supernatural confidence accompanies everyone being led by God. Everyone being led by God. Though the whole nation, more or less, including many, many Christians and many, many big pastors, <laughs> could not see what I saw. And were talking all they needed to talk. It didn't shake me one day. I didn't pray about it. I didn't pray for them. I didn't pray against them. God knows. I will just enjoy myself. And then the following day, I will come again. You do this, you are heading for this. You do this, you are heading for this. <laughs> and I go home. If I'm driving to town, I drive confidently. I'm driving back from time, I drive. You do like this to me, I wave to you. <laughs> Each one is using his own style. Uh -huh. Amen. That's your way of saying, thank you, sir. Though you spray your finger, because you have some problem, we can't close <laughs> But I wave my own. <laughs> Confidence. Amen. You are perpetually beside the still waters. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has a great recompense of the wars. It is your confidence in God that puts you in the command in command of the affairs of life. Your confidence in God naturally puts you in command of the affairs of life. They were there speaking boldly and they gave witness to the word of his grace by granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Acts 14.3 Awesome God. This is very interesting, very cheap. Just to line up. Supernatural confidence is the natural heritage of those that are led by the Spirit. You are just confident. You are not guessing. <laughs> it came to pass when Pharaoh let the people go that God did not lead them by the way of the wilderness. Although that was short. It's not leading through the way of the desert, or the way of the Philistines, although that was short, Exodus 13, 17. For God said, let's for adventure, the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. 
<laughs> but God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. This God is wonderful. <laughs> you are taking your people, three million of them, <laughs> to pass through the Red Sea. Are they going to swim? Pregnant women? Little babies? Say, oh, hello folks, time to swim. <laughs> oh, use your confidence. Because God was leading them. He said, why are you crying to me? Tell them to go forward. Search for your Lord. And the sea parted away. A highway was built by God in one second. Because nobody was jumping into the ditch. And yet, it's not a swimmo, it's a sea. <laughs> you know the depth? I had the data somewhere, but I don't think I can remember exactly the figures now. The width and the depth of the Red Sea. He built an highway in one second. Don't play with God. When he's leading you, he just, he begins to spring surprises. Awesome God. Tell them to go forward. And then they march forward. And the sea saw them. The Bible says in Psalm 114, and fled. Why? God's presence. Clearing the barriers on your path. Has God changed? Please don't build your adventure on guesswork. I know my sheep and they know my voice. Which way, Lord? What time, Lord? You don't have to be a pastor or an apostle, a prophet. <laughs> God is committed to leading all of his people. He leaded his own sheep out. So if you're a sheep of his flock, then you're entitled to his leading. John chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. And when he put forth his own sheep, he went before them, and the sheep followed him, for they know his voice. So as long as you are one of his sheep, it's your right to enjoy his leading. And his leading will imbue supernatural confidence in you. Second proof of being led by the Spirit is divine strength, divine energy, divine vigor. vigor. Judges 6 and 14, have not I sent thee? Go in this thy might. When God sends, he strengthens the saint. To follow his plan, he strengthens <laughs> the saint. Supernatural strength. Supernatural strength. Everyone following his leading will testify if he's sincere that this is not me I used to know. <laughs> Your spiritual energy comes alive. Your mental versatility comes alive. Your physical strength comes alive. You're not just you. When he sends, he strengthens the scent. You know how many kilometers I cover when I'm teaching here? <laughs> I need to buy an equipment to know how many. <laughs> and I can do this tonight. What I'm doing now, it doesn't do me anything. And if you are willing to stay, why not? We can stay here together. <laughs> when it's 12 midnight, you start going home. <laughs> it's something. Eh? I've never suffered any burnout. It strengthens the light. You agree with me, I'm strengthened. You don't agree with me, I'm strengthened. Yes, sir. <laughs> it strengthens the scent. Unusual strength. Spiritual vigor. Yes. Energy. 
Now you never lose your strength anymore. Amen. And I can tell you this. No one can command exploits without strength. Exploits always makes a lot of demand on your energy. A lot of demand on your energy. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. It's not for jelly-like Christians. It's not for chocolate Christians. Exploit is for the strengthened, the strong. Strengthened by God, not by themselves. Strengthened by God. Strengthened by God. I was visited with unusual intellectual strength in starting Covenant University. Unusual. A to Z, innovation. When he sends, he strengthens the sense. You won't miss his ladies anymore. You will not miss his ladies anymore. If you go into any business, any venture, you are not sent. You just turn and up, turn and up. What am I really doing? What's happening to me? Check, am I sent? Check, he's your father. He loves you. He holds your future and my future in his hand. Check with him. When he sends, he strengthens the sent. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. Wherefore, when he come into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. <laughs> he prepares our body to match his task for us. Our body is rewired to match his task for us. You won't run another man's race. He said, let us run the race that is set before us. Many are running other people's race. This man is doing that. That's what I should do. This man is doing that. That's what the world is saying now. This man is doing that. That's the end thing today. The end thing may become the out thing. Hebrews 12. We are foreseen that we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us uh, lay aside every weight and the same which doth easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Write the vision, my plan for you, and run with it. Don't run another man's race. Run your race. Run your race. Somebody is flying away to Canada. I think I must go. Okay, you must go. Another one is going to Asia. I think that's where the thing is happening now. I'm going to Asia. We had a testimony here. Somebody went from China to South Africa to Europe and came back to square one. Because he wasn't sent. Others are sent there. They just unusual favor. Following them. Stillness, quietness. I mean, breakthroughs. Others just went because they saw others going. Amen. Amen. Take, for instance, a ministry that is not sent to build an hospital and a built one. It will be the first one to be, asked, <laughs> to be admitted. <laughs> first one, because we'll be bleeding like this. <laughs> you know why I asked the Lord if this is not your university? Tell me, I will tear the paper now. I don't want trouble. The one you sent me, I'm still doing it. You are adding this one to the convince. Tell me if it's your own. If not your own, I will never do it. No matter who is putting pressure. And then you go and try that on your own. When the month is coming, your temperature will be rising. 
Amen. You'll be doing what you have vowed never to do in your life. You bribe this and bribe that and bribe this and bribe that until you lose your place in heaven. Amen. Amen. I don't have any ambition. This ambition is my ambition. It's plan and purpose what I set for. Yes, it doesn't matter where people are going. They can go anywhere they want. Amen. Amen. Why is it we are in the same dress? That's your problem. I don't have a problem with you. <laughs> and I won't tell you why. Amen. I don't owe you that explanation. It's my body. I can put the same dress on. If I don't change, you won't know. It's the same color. If it fades, we fade to white. <laughs> Amen. So, <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now lift up your right hand and give God thanks for his word that has come your way today. Give God thanks for his word that has come your way today. If you receive and accept it, give him thanks for, for sending you his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.